The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. Lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his full of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. From the other world where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. He cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. Now he is comforted here, whereas you are in torment. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He begged, Then I beg you, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that they, he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. <clears throat> Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Pretty familiar readings for us. They come around, uh, I think, uh, every three years in the regular lectionary cycle, but they always come around in the Lenten season because Lent has no cycle of readings. The readings are the same every year for Lent. So they really should be quite familiar to us. And much more particularly than in ordinary time, the readings of Lent are paired or uh, paralleled with one another. You would recognize easily enough that the style of writing from Jeremiah here is almost beatitude-like. Blessed are they, happy are they, Woe to you. It seems like a very strong word, and I'd like to understand its meaning more particularly. Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings. Unhappy? Woe to? Cursed is pretty strong. The point is not that we should not trust in one another. We absolutely should, because it's only in our trustful hope-filled, loving bonds of relationship and friendship and love with one another that we defend ourselves in becoming the rich man. Dives, where that name came from, I don't know. But if we're not in relationship with others, we're only in relationship with ourselves because we have what we feel we need and we have good stored up for years to come and we can eat sumptuously when was the last time you ate sumptuously? Don't answer that. Such a person is living for the world. They're living in the power of their own control. They're living in the security of their own illusions. We certainly know now if a person eats sumptuously every day or with any high degree of regularity, you're probably looking at real high cholesterol, 
probably diabetes and likely heart disease. Some people are very aware of that, and even in this postmodern age, some people are still very unaware of that. The image is a lively one. Such a person is like a barren bush in the desert. It enjoys no change of season. All such a person has is the comforts that they can provide for themselves. I mean, who wants to eat sumptuously every day? What's the, what, what's the celebration if the same food, rich and, 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 and juicy as they are every day? On the other side, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, happy, secure, yielding. They are like the tree planted by the river's water that stretches its root into the, roots into the stream, whereby there is no, no, no uh, fear of drought. Again, it's the person that lives in the Spirit. Such a person attending to the Spirit with compassion and empathy for others will always know the presence of the Lord. Their leaves, so to speak, will always be green. It would seem important to notice, to note, that Jesus is telling this parable, this story, to the Pharisees. They were the ones that ate well every day. They had the best clothes. They had stable income. They were the well-to-do of the society. And in fact, historically, it is true that they were more oppressive to the poor and the sinners in the Jewish society than were the, Jew than were the Romans. It was they who created the sinner class, tax collectors, prostitutes, those who don't keep the law, the blind, the lame, the crippled, etc. They formed that class or that sect of people to be rejected. No empathy, no compassion. Very clear that the rich man represents the Pharisees and the scribes and those who lord religion over others. The story is particular to Luke and probably more actively for our purpose, it's really about empathy and compassion. It's evident enough, if you follow the storyline, that Dives, or the rich man, knew that Lazarus was on his porch. I guess he could have shooed him away or kicked him off the porch. But he was there, but in another frame, the rich man never saw him. He ignored him. Now, all of a sudden, after he dies, and he sees Lazarus in the comfort of the bosom of Abraham, now, he all of a sudden, he knows Lazarus. In Luke, the, the Beatitudes are blessed and their woes. Woe to you! who build up heavy loads for others to carry, but lift no finger to help carry them there yourself. The story really, in so many ways, is about compassion. But I'd like to make the point, too, that the story is particular to Luke, and it parallels the story of the prodigal son and Mary and Martha. And I think there's one more that escapes me at the moment. Isn't it true, if you think about it, is there not a rich man and a Lazarus in each of us? Yes, it is psychological, but it's also biblical. The age of Jesus was not the same kind of psychological age that we know today, but they were not unaware. They knew temperament, they knew personality. They're all, there is a rich one in, in us, the person in our, the part of ourselves that we love, that we treat well, that we try to put forward so others can see? And is there not a Lazarus in each of us? That part of our temperament or personality that makes us feel uncomfortable, you're not enough, people don't like you, just stay hidden kind of thing? Do we say that to ourselves out loud? Eh, no, but the inner mind, the inner critic, the inner judge can say that, right? So Luke is pointing this out to us. The same is true, which is why I'm pointing it out, the story of the prodigal father. It's the father who's prodigal. He's the one that's so radical because he loves both of his sons without end. 
one is equally sinful as the other. We like to dislike the younger son because his sins, we can say, well, they're more immoral. They're sexual. They have to do with money and, 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 and just pleasing oneself in, in um, hedonism, we might say. The other guy, what was wrong with him? He disdained his father as much as the uh, younger brother. The younger brother at least was waking up to himself, trying to individuate in a very immature and selfish way. But the older brother, by what, six months or a year, maybe a couple years, he's disdained his father and, and rejected his father and the, his brother. Similar with Martha and Mary. You've heard these things before. There's a Martha in all of us, even if we're strongly introverted, but there's a Mary in all of us as well. Luke, who's understood to have been a physician, would have had perhaps more insight into these things, were called to be integrated. To be integrated into Christ is to know empathy and compassion as a natural, normal, and essential part of the human temperament. <clears throat> I forget where I read it, but it certainly is true that as we I've gone now through a couple of weeks of our Lenten series, Hope in Changing Times. We're highlighting hope, and we're talking about hope only as we can in light of faith and love. Faith, hope, and love are really quite empty if they do not know compassion and empathy. A very devout and religious person can pray ever so devoutly, and they can think very highly of themselves as they are before God. But if they live only through the rich person or that person within them whom they can feel comfortable with and love, but they can ignore the Lazaruses of the world in the same way that they deny or betray the uncomfortable part of themselves that they don't want to see or accept, where's the empathy? Where's the compassion? That represents the great chasm. The great chasm is not God's judgment. It's not God's disdain for the discompassionate and the unempathetic. It's the chasm between being open and allowing love to form us and allowing faith, hope, and love to transform us in our relationships with others. None of us can save the world. All of us can do something. As we pray then today, in many ways, although I've said a lot, the readings say a lot by themselves. It speaks for itself. The challenge is, who are the Lazaruses around us? Literally, other people who are in need that we tend to not see or we do see and ignore. That's not a complaint. It's not a judgment. In fact, I will affirm you and thank you. What was the figure? $620 for the... Um, Ukrainian agency last week. We used to get maybe $100 when we had real soup. This virtual soup is so much better. And we get five or six times more money. I don't know why that is, but I was, and I said this last night in the talk, I always thought it was kind of funny and, well, in a poignant kind of way. Well, I don't really like this soup. So they took the soup back and took the dollar back. Hello, it's not about the soup, but maybe in this case it is about the dollar. $600 is a nice response. So far we have about 320 I think, from last night, and more will come in online through the course of the week. That's compassion, that's empathy. We may never meet those folks. Uh, the charity this week is uh, Oakland County Lighthouse, serves the homeless, and... Um, uh, orphans, and uh, Jim gave the description. Uh, so again, those opportunities are available to us. Um, you don't have to do it all, because nobody can do it all. But we can all do something. Maybe the Lord will incite you to take some piece of this and ponder it. In the, Lord, in the Lord's name and by the Spirit, may we all grow in compassion and empathy for those in need, especially those who close to us.